I want to spend this last segment in talking about specific case scenarios and reviewing the assignment that you have with the Medtronic resource that's available online. In our first case, we have Alice, who is a busy office manager and works very long days. She often skips breakfast, grabs a snack from the vending machine from lunch, and then eats a TV dinner or two and lots of snacks right before bedtime. She has no time for exercise, and her job is demanding and sedentary. Her fasting glucose average is near 120 milligrams per deciliter, and her A1C is 7.5 on her last doctor's visit when he screened her for blood sugar. She has a BMI of 29 and a blood pressure of 138 over 94. So here we have a patient who clearly meets the criteria uh, as a candidate for someone who is uh, impaired glucose function, impaired glucose tolerance, or pre-diabetic. We also have some indication that she's having an increase in her blood pressure and she is considered overweight. So our goals for Alice. We're going to try the my plate or the plate method to help her follow a consistent carbohydrate and calorie intake over the day we will make sure it's a calorie deficit to promote weight loss. We want to reduce the saturated fats and cholesterol. We want to lower the sodium. And given her blood pressure, we want to go with moderate protein to protect her kidneys. We'll have her eat three meals and two snacks and try to exercise for one hour every day. We want to get her glucose within an acceptable range, her blood pressure, and weight also within acceptable ranges. We're going to do some follow-up with vision, kidney, uh, blood lipids, do some neurological tests, maybe test uh, thyroid and bone density, again to see if this impaired glucose tolerance has impacted any of these other sim systems and also to establish a baseline. We'll also have her monitor blood glucose two or three times a day and make sure that uh, what we're planning to do for her is effective. And bring her back in three months if her A1C is not improved. We'll add an oral agent and look at her diet again. We'll also have her do some uh, food logs and enter the blood glucose and bring her back in a month to make sure that our diet prescription is adequate. Let's look at another case scenario. Mike, he's been able to control his blood glucose with many years for metformin, uh, with metformin and with a good diet and he likes to exercise. However, on his last routine visit, the doctor noted that his kidney function tests uh, were not optimal and he's had to change glasses a couple of times. They're concerned that his diabetes is not well controlled. His A1C is creeping up and it's currently at 6.9%. Before adding insulin, Mike's doctor orders a visit to the dietitian for a controlled carb and calorie control diet. So the dietitian puts him on a 2400 calorie diet. He's going to continue his cycling and jogging going to make sure that he has good footwear, uh, probably going to do some neurological testing to make sure that we're not doing, doing any damage, vascular damage to his feet, and um, we may want to cut back on the jogging some and encourage more resistant training and low impact training. We're going to uh, place him on 2400 calories since we're not really sure how many calories he's been eating. He's just been making sure that he eats three meals and three snacks, but now we're going to watch that. We want 50% of the calories to be from carbohydrate. So if you do the math, uh, 24 divided by 4 calories per gram comes out to 300 grams uh, per day. And if you divide 300 by 15, that works out to 20 carbohydrate exchanges per day. So he should get five exchanges, excuse me, 
five exchanges at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then we're going to put the rest of them with his snacks and give a little extra at night to cover his uh, sugar while he sleeps. So for a sample meal, uh, five starches or carb exchanges would look like two slices of toast, a cup of milk, and a banana. And you do the same thing with lunch. You could give them a sandwich would be two slices of bread, would be two carbs, an apple, um, glass of milk, maybe some pretzels. That would come out to five. Snack time might be, um, you know, two apples or some crackers and cheese and a um, fruit drink of some sort. But making sure the carb is consistent throughout the day. We'll have to show him how to estimate his portion sizes, making sure that protein stays between three to four ounces a meal, and foods to avoid that are high in sodium and saturated fat. We'll go over the appropriate beverages and spend a lot of time explaining what a carb exchange is and uh, how to measure his blood sugar. He'll also need to keep a food log, uh, recording his, his blood sugars preprandial and postprandial, and adjust the diet and meds as needed. So we send Mike out and he keeps a food log during the first few days and comes back to the RD for follow-up. So let's discuss this uh, food log for picking out just two days. Remember that the two-hour postprandial blood glucose should be 120 and a one-hour postprandial should be 140 with an overall goal of 70 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. So if we look at Mike's uh, breakfast here, we see that um, after breakfast, his blood glucose is 247. Now that's at 12 o'clock and he ate at 7.30. So clearly he's had plenty of time to get this down into the appropriate range. But you notice uh, the carbs that he eats. He has eight carbs here for breakfast. Clearly that's far more than he should have had, and it's impacted his blood sugar. After lunch, uh, he's, he's, he had four to five for lunch, which was appropriate, and he's got an appropriate blood glucose here right before dinner. Notice uh, dinner though, his carb choice is only one to two, and that's gonna cause this hypoglycemia here. And so he checked his blood sugar and he had to eat some carbs to get that back up. So again, you can see the same pattern here. As long as he stays within four to five for his meals, we tend to get good preprandial blood sugars. Uh, it's when he goes too high or too low that we get these wild swings. Looks like Mike needs some help with portion control. Our last case is Bill. He's been a type 1 diabetic for as long as he can remember and his mom has always made sure he followed his diet and took his scheduled split doses of insulin. He'd get a long acting uh, type of insulin to cover his basal needs and then he would take some injections to cover what he needed for his meals. However, Bill wants to play football and he wants to make sure that his schedule will be less structured. Exercise can also have unpredictable impacts on blood sugar, so his endocrinologist is suggesting an insulin pump to maintain tight glucose control. In order to learn what Bill is going to have to learn, students in this course will need to complete the Medtronic online course, The Basics of Insulin Pump Therapy. Patients who go on an insulin pump complete this type of training prior to working with their health care provider on establishing baseline settings of their pump. To do this, you will need to go to the website www.medtronic.com. At some point as you scroll through the screens, you will need to register as a new user. Be sure that you write down your username and password. Click on the Health Care Professionals tab and then select Education and Training. If you have logged in and registered properly, you should be able to get to the My Learning tab that you see here under the Resources tab. 
Notice that they offer a number of online classes. You will need to select the Diabetes Education and then scroll to Basics of Insulin Pump Therapy. This is the one that you will need to complete. Note that the Basics of Insulin Pump Therapy includes all of these sections. Balancing Glucose and Insulin, Managing Pump Therapy, Counting Carbs, and Calculating Boluses. Note that it will take you over two hours to complete these and that you need to account for making notes. Material from this will be on your review quiz and it will also appear on the final exam. When you have finished all four sections, you will be given the option to print a um, certificate of completion. Make sure that when you use a computer to access these courses that you are connected to a printer and that you can print this at the time that you complete each section. Make a copy of those certificates. There will be a number of them as you complete each section. It will have your name on it. It will have the date that it was completed. Make a copy and submit this to the School of Nursing Secretary for me to collect. This is what we want you to get out of completing this uh, Basics of Insulin Pump Therapy. You should be able to list the glucose values relevant to pre- and postprandial times and normal diabetic ranges. Describe the effects of the types of insulin on action, peak, and time of activity in the body. Now with uh, the Basics of Insulin Pump Therapy, they're going to focus on the short acting. You want to describe how glucose is controlled using an insulin pump. Monitoring and control with initial pump use and after establishing the pump settings. Sick days. DKA prevention and treatment. Considerations for exercise and hypo and hyperglycemia. You want to be able to discuss and describe carb counting and insulin pump therapy for glycemic control. This means how to calculate a food bolus, a correction bolus, and a total bolus. You need to be able to define and explain the terms ICR, ISF, and know how to use them for calculations. You will also learn how to estimate the carbohydrate content of foods using exchange system values or looking at a food label. So here's how this works. Read the chapter in your book. View the, uh, obviously you are viewing the YouTube video presentations and making notes and I've also provided links to the um, file so that you can copy or print the uh, PowerPoint presentations. And finally, complete the Medtronic course, Basics of Insulin Pump Therapy, Making Notes. Once you have done all of this, you will need to complete the post-test for this entire section. You will only get one chance to complete that exam. One shot. So make sure that you score very well and that you are prepared for that test. Submit a copy of your certificates to the nursing secretary. If you've uh, completed those, then the grade on your post-test will stand. If you haven't completed those, the grade will revert to a zero. Note that your score on the diabetes section accounts as 10% of your final grade. So it's very important that you learn this material and demonstrate that on the post-test, in completing the modules, and in answering the questions appropriately on the midterm exam. Again, contact me if you have any questions about this assignment.